Hi, I'm Kelly from Kelly J Jewelry. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this pendant. And I've put a list in the description below of everything you'll need. Um, there's also a link to my Etsy shop, my Facebook page and my Instagram. Oh, and I've put a link to Grace's Instagram because I've set one up for her now. Because we're working with frames today, we're going to be using a lot of different sizes of wire and a lot of tools. So to make this pendant, you'll need 1.5 millimeter wire. That's 14 gauge, and I've cut one length at nine inches. That's 23 centimeters. The same gauge, 1.5 millimeters. That's 14 gauge on the half round, and I've got one length at seven inches and two lengths at three inches. So that's 18 centimetres and 7.5 centimetres. I'll be using the 0.8 millimetre wire, which is 20 gauge, and I've got two lengths at 18 inches, which is 46 centimetres. Then you've got your weaving wire, which is the 0.315 millimetre, which is 28 gauge, and you'll need about 500 centimetres. Grind mine onto a bobbin. You can cut lengths as you go if you don't have a bobbin. If you'd like to buy one, I'll put a link in the description below of where I get mine. Tools. Today, because we're working with frames, we're going to be using more tools. I've got my um, my old cutters for using on the thicker wire. Because I don't want to break my new cutters, which I forgot to put in there. There they are. So we've got... You want some old cutters or some oversized cutters for cutting the thicker wires. I've got my bale pliers for handling the thicker wires. And you've got um, tweezer nose pliers, round nose pliers. My standard wire cutters that I use for everything, they're a lot sharper than these. So I do use these for everything. But I don't want to spoil them on the thicker wire, so I haven't used the old ones. And then some nylon pliers. If you don't have nylon pliers... Don't worry about it, I just, I love these, but it's not important that you use these. Little stone. Today I'm using this little Labradorite cabbage on. It's oval, it's quite small. If you want to use a bigger stone, then you just got to adjust all your wire lengths and your weave repeats. Just make sure you use a bit more wire. My stone is 18 millimetres by 13, but you can use any size you like. Just use a little bit more wire if your stone's bigger than mine. And that's flat backed. I may use a few small beads. Later on, I haven't decided yet. So first we're going to shape the actual frame. And it's always best to do it oversized. Because the last thing you want is squashing and breaking your stone. So you want to make your frame bigger then your stone and then you've got enough room to then add your wires around the sides so we'll shape it around the stone but we want it to sit bigger than the stone so put in your wire roughly in the middle the middle of your wire next to the stone we're just gonna press down and shape that big wire around the stone And we want it to sit big. So you want about that size for that stone. You could even go a little bit bigger than that. And then when it reaches the top, you just want to bend it straight up. We've got this shape and this will be the frame for the whole thing. So now we're going to weave across the wires at the top. 
could take your weaving wire and we're going to start with three wraps around the bottom wire We'll go over the top wire and around the top wire Over the top wire again, under the bottom wire, and around that bottom wire. And that's our repeat, so we'll keep doing that. Over the top, and around that top wire. Over the top wire again, under the bottom wire, and around that bottom wire. So that's what that weave should look like. And I've done about two and a half centimetres. So I'm just going to wrap a couple of times around that one wire to finish it off. Pull on both the wires to get them nice and tight and then I'm going to cut them. I'm using my third size on my bale pliers. My weave has slid and down a little bit. didn't quite get my wire central and I've got one a bit longer than the other. I'm just going to push it through the middle because we need to secure this bale around this frame. This wire is really tough to work with. I'm going to wrap this wire around the frame to secure that bail in place. Bend it around. The frame. And squeeze the other one around as well. So I've just squeezed it tight around that frame there. So just wrap it around the actual frame there. It's a bit tough to do. Mine's not perfect. So next we're going to take the half round thick wire. So that's the 14 gauge. We're going to build a little platform for our stone to sit on. So you want to position it so the flat side is where the stone will sit against. 
in a low position on the frame, about there. Try and hold it in place the best you can. We need to secure that around the sides of the frame. Then we want to put another one with the other piece of half round, flat side towards where the stone will be. These are going to keep moving around until I squeeze it tight. So we're going to put this about here so we've got two across the back holding the stone. And then when you're happy with the position of them, squeeze them tight and cut these wires off at the back. So I've added a second bar for the stone can, can sit nicely against. When you're happy with the position of them, hold them still because they'll keep moving around. And then grab your wires and pull on them to tighten them up. And when you're happy with them, I might pull my middle one down a little bit. Cut them off. I'm using my old cutters because it's quite thick, the wire. Just flattening them down now and squeezing them around. and keep checking that your stone still fits. And now take one of the 0.8mm wire, which is the 20 gauge, you need to find the centre point. We're going to add this wire to the frame, roughly at the centre point of the wire. That's my dog making all that noise. I'm just wrapping it around a few times. And I'll 
I'll grab a bind again. Oh, and I've made Gracie her own Instagram page. <laughs> she's quite a character, so I thought I'd like to upload videos and pictures of her. So she's on Instagram now. I'll put a link on the screen and on the in the description below. So I've added that wire. And it's very flailing about at the minute, so I'm just going to squeeze that a little bit. So now I'm going to start a weave onto these two wires and then I'm going to add the other wire so we've got another two wires below this one. Just trying to push them together at the base, get the weave nice and tight on there. So take your weaving wire and we'll start with three wraps around that bottom wire. And three wraps around the both wires. And we'll keep repeating that. Three wraps around the bottom wire and three wraps around both wires. I've done 12 repeats of that weave. Cut that wire off from the bottom there. And before we go any further with this wire, it's probably easier just to add the second wire because otherwise we're going to struggle to get it in there. So take your other piece of 0.8mm wire, find the centre and add it as we added this one, but put it here so it's below this wire. So I've added a second wire there. same way as we added the top one. So leaving that there for a minute, go to the back. We'll go back to focusing on this weave. So take the wires to the top of this frame. And we're going to bend it. Oh, it's hard to get to it now. Okay, I'm going to put those over there right away. And I'm going to bend it over to the left. Twisted it a little bit, so I'm just straightening it back out. So we've got a nice large loop at the top there. And we'll keep the weave as flat as possible. about 20 inches of weaving wire cut that off so I've still got 20 inches roughly of weaving wire still attached because I want to use my weaving wire on the next wire so I've 
cut my bobbin free and I'm reattaching it to the next wire. This one. So the top one of these two. And I'm going to add coils. So just wrap in the weaving wire round and round. So I've coiled about four and a half centimetres. We'll just do a bit to start with and then we can add coils later on. Sliding it down into place, I'm going to cut that tail off now while I can get a good grip on it. And then take the coil, go around to follow the weave. And then take the bare wire take that around again as well to follow the flow So I did way too much weave, I've just undone two centimetres, so don't do four, or do two centimetres of weave, because we want it to come to where this weave is, so of the coiled wire, you just want two centimetres of coiled wire, and you want them to match up like that, so yeah, two centimetres, and I've got a three millimetre bead, I'm going to add to that bare wire. Pop it in there just to finish that off like that. So the coiled wire, I'm going to cut that now. And level up all your wires and now we're going to weave across all of them. using the remaining weaving wire. So weaving across all four wires now. We've already got the three wraps around the bottom one because that was from the weave before. So we'll go around the bottom two twice. We'll go around the bottom three wires twice. Come up between the bottom two wires. Now we'll go around the top three wires. Now I'm working without a bobbin because I've cut it earlier. My wire's a nightmare. It's wrapping around everything. I really do recommend those bobbins if you... Don't use them. So twice around the top three wires. And then come under the bottom wire and go twice around the bottom three wires. And then 
around the bottom two wires. And then three wraps around the bottom wire and that's our repeat so we'll do a few more repeats of that weave so i've done four repeats of that weave now the amount of repeats you do depends on the size of your stone the size of your frame so this weave is going to go, I can get my stone to stay the right way, this weave is going to go around the side of the stone there. And then I'm going to post my wires through to the back. So I'm going to add one more repeat. So it reaches to the bottom there of the piece. So I've added one more repeat of that. And I'm going to cut that weaving wire now. back so now holding this all in place and you want to hold your stone really firmly now and keep it in the right place I'm going to take these wires over the bottom and bring them back up under the bottom of the stone. I'm actually going to take the stone out. I'll put it back in in a minute. I'm going to try and hold that weave in place. Because I don't want the weave to bend. I'll try and not let the wires cross over too. I'm going to fiddle with this until it's back in place how I want it to be. So when they're almost in place, I've then pulled them through one at a time. Making sure the weave comes over the front of the stone. And it's actually pulled down at the top of it there. You see I've got a gap at the top now where it's pulled down as I pulled the weave into place. Which is fine, it still looks nice. I've straightened all these wires with my nylon pliers. So I've fiddled with it a bit. My weave still comes over the stone, but I've straightened this weave a little and my wires have gone back up to the top where I originally wanted them. This pendant is very adaptable. You can do whatever you like with it. But I'm just telling you all the steps that I've done as I go. So that's what I've got so far. My weave has come over the bottom there, slightly to the one side now, which I will add to the design. You can do whatever you like with this as you go. If you do it as I do, we should end up with the same thing, hopefully. So now we're going to weave across these top two wires. So take your weaving wire and wrap three times around the bottom of the two wires. Slide that down 
into place. I've let the stone fall out for now because it's going to keep falling out for a minute. Push that weave, push those wraps right the way down. And then we're going to go three times around both of those wires. And we'll repeat that about eight times. Three wraps around the bottom wire and three wraps around the top, around the two wires, just working on the top two wires. So I've done eight repeats of that weave. I'm going to cut that tail off as well. Put the stone back in. So this weave, I'm now going to bend around in quite a small loop this time. And then I'm going to take the next wire and I'm going to scoop that around to, to go inside the weave there. And I'm going to do the same for the last wire. Bring it round at a tighter angle. Hard to do this behind the camera. And on that last wire again, I'm going to add another 3mm bead. So I've added my small bead there. And I've got all four wires now sitting next to each other. So I'm going to do a few repeats of a weave now just to hold all the wires together. Already got the three wraps around the bottom there. So I'm going to wrap around both wires once. Three wires once up between the bottom two wires over the top. So I've gone around the top three wires once under the bottom wire over the third. So we're going around the bottom three wires once under the bottom wire over the second wire. So I've gone around the bottom two wires once. And then three wraps around the bottom wire. I'm going to do that again. I'll do another repeat of that weave. Around the bottom two. Around the bottom three. Up between the bottom two. Around the top three. Under the bottom wire and around the bottom three. Around the bottom two. Three wraps around the bottom wire. If you followed my other videos, you'll know I really like this little weave. Not a clue what it's called. Or if it's even got a name. So I've added another two repeats that simpler weave oh and I need to finish with the three wraps around the bottom wire now I'm going to curve the weave making sure the stone is in place curve this weave around a little to go around the stone Now I'm just going to continue the weave over the bottom two wires. So I've already got my three wraps around the bottom wire. 
I'm now going to put three wraps around the bottom two wires and repeat that a few more times. Three wraps around the bottom wire, three wraps around both wires. So I've done four repeats of that weave. Holding the stone back down in place, you need to do as many repeats as it takes to reach to the top of the stone. If you bend it around to follow the stone, so it reaches the top of the stone like that. So I'm gonna cut that weaving wire and take those two wires through to the back, holding it in place at the front best you can. Mine's totally moved already. Trying to keep the stone in place. So that's what we've got so far. So when you're happy with the position of the weave, we need to go around again to properly hold that weave in place. So I'm going to take these two wires through as well. This one I'm going to curve to come across the weave and feed that through to the back. So it goes below those wires there. And this one is going to follow it around. Go around as well. So now with these final four wires, take your weaving wire and we're going to weave across, I'm holding it upside down, we're going to weave across these two wires here. So it's the top two if you're holding it upside down. So I'm going to add three wraps around the bottom wire to attach the weaving wire. And then three wraps around the both wires. And repeat that. Three wraps around the bottom wire, three wraps around both wires. So I've done five repeats of that. Cut off that tail end. And then take that weave. I'm going to bend it around. And it's quite a tight bend we're going to do here.
and then I'm going to part the wires Just going to do a little bit of a weave across these two wires just to finish it off. So I'm going to over and around the top wire. I'll go around that again and again. Go around it another two times. Over and across the bottom wire. And I'll go around that another two times. Over and across the top wire. And around it again and again. I'll go over the bottom wire and then we'll continue to add coils to that bottom wire. Added a few more coils down this wire. Now my stone is still very loose so this wire now, this top wire, is to hold that stone down in place and I'm going to post it through gap there between the frame and the weave on the other side so very carefully post the wire straight through to the back and we'll do it that way my wire to the back and I've put three three millimeter beads on it and now I'm going to finish it off by wrapping it around this frame wire here to secure it all in place and I'll go around there a few times and that will hold the stone in place as well. So I've wrapped it around the frame and I've got my three beads across the back and now I'm going to shape this wire, I've straightened it with my nylon pliers, to go around And down the side. And I'm going to secure that around the bottom wire. The bottom of the frame. It's to hold that wire down so it holds the stone down. So I've wrapped that wire around a few times. And that just needs to be pushed around the frame there. And this other coiled wire I'm going to post that through to the back above the stone and I've just pulled that wire through to the back so we need to finish that off and wrap it round anywhere on the frame where you can get in where there's a nice gap and wrap it around a few times So that's what we've got so far. So now we're going to weave across these two wires here. So take your weaving wire. Holding it upside down. We're going to start with three wraps around the bottom wire. three wraps around both wires and we'll repeat that about ten times so I've done eight repeats so far because I didn't want the weave to be too long cut that tail end off and then this weave if you make sure it's really pushed down at the bottom it's going to come over 
opened. Oop. So we didn't even need that many. I reckon we'll need about six repeats of that weave. So I'm going to undo a little bit. So that's just six repeats there. And I've curved it around. And I'll clip off the weaving wire at the back. And then I'll take both of the wires, push them through to secure that weave to the frame. So there we have it finished. I added a little bit of weaving wire around the wire with the beads on to hold the beads there because they kept sliding along. But I think that will look lovely when it's oxidised.